Hello and welcome to Nap at Home. If you're brand new here, my name is Linda. Welcome, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. So today's video is going to be kind of the first step in getting things ready to pack for my presumptive upcoming move. And as I had said, I really wanted to get things packed up because I don't want to be living in this house this time next year. I want to be someplace else. So with that being said, um, as you guys know, I have a massive milk glass collection. Of course, that's just one small part of it. So I want to get it all cataloged and I want to get it all documented and actually put into um, a binder, basically, that we can then keep in the safe. And I'm going to do it not just for my glass, and my collections, but also for Rogers. So, you know, he collects the uranium glass, the Toby jugs, and he also collects um, decanters. So, Ginny's playing with her mouse. And uh, anyhow, yes, all my cats play fetch. If you've seen anything on TikTok, you've probably seen my cats playing fetch. But anyway, I digress. So, all that being said, I'm going to show you what I picked up to start I the process. I tried recording it in my office and the lighting was just too poor. You can probably hear me better, but the lighting was really poor. So, um, anyhow, so I got some items that are gonna help me to get everything organized and, um, and of course it has to be pretty because I mean, honestly, why would I wanna do it and not have it be pretty? So to that end, um, I'm going to show you guys what I picked I out. Pick up a book. Now this is a post bound um, scrapbook. I love these because you can make them expand really far. And as you know, like I said, I have so many pieces that it just makes sense to have one that I can continually add to. And then I also went through and kind of took a quick inventory of the glass that I have and like the makers and such and like who I had the most of. So most of my glass is going to be Anchor Hawking and Fire King, Fenton, Fostoria, Imperial, Indiana Glass, Kempel, McKee, and Westmoreland. I have more of those pieces in my collection. Um, what do I have like bits and pieces of here and there like onesie twosies kind of thing I have Dithridge, Eo Brody, Hazel Atlas, Jeanette, um, Ellie Smith, and Northwood and a couple of others that I'll probably add randomly. So to that end I decided that I wanted to make um, dividers. So I had scrap of paper already so I didn't have to buy this and um, yeah so I just like different Kind of really pretty and I thought they look really pretty with this particular uh, planner that I got or scrapbook because they're like flowers and they're kind of vintage floral sort of thing um, then the other thing that I did was I went onto my computer and I made up my own whoops, inventory sheets so um, I'll show you these in more detail as well, but I did leave a space here for a picture. So I'm going to show you um, how I take pictures at some point. Right now I'm just going to kind of show you what I picked up and then I'll show you guys uh, what I'm using to take the pictures because you want to get the best detail in your pictures. And then I'll be sending off to pick uh, to have those. Um, I don't know if I'll have them shipped here because Shutterfly usually has really good deals or if I'll just pick them up at Walgreens or something like that or at Sam's Club or, you know, whatever. There's a billion different places. Um, for my dividers, I have a, um, if you don't know what a mink machine is, it's basically a glorified laminator. I have a regular laminator also, but I love my mink machine. And um, it's great for like foiling, but it also works fantastic for just as a laminator in general. It works awesome. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to laminate the dividers and then I got these really pretty little divider tabs that are also kind of in theme or on theme. So these can go here and of course I'll have, you know, nine ta nine dividers. So, you know, they'll just kind of go straight down, do, 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 you know, like normal. 
but um, they're really pretty and they have like rose gold foiling on the side of them, which I love, of course. And let's see what else. So I'll show you how I do that. And then um, I'll also show you I did pick up some extra um, protectors, sheet protectors. Now, okay, so this, because it is, oh, sorry, it is a scrapbook, of course, you know, they do have their own um, sheet protectors, but these are $5.99, and I did get all of my, um, I got the scrapbook, these and the little tabs, um, forty percent off. So the scrapbook itself was like seven ninety nine. I think this was like three forty nine, and the little tabs were like two ninety nine. I think it was. Um, yeah, so it was three ninety nine, and then like three forty nine. I think for these, but it's a package of twenty, and. Um, you know, and it does come with the extra posts so that you can make your scrapbook bigger. But again, you know, if you don't get them on sale from Hobby Lobby, then they're $5.99. Um, I have a lot of pieces and I'm not brand specific. I'm not a brand snob by any stretch of the imagination. So I have sheet protectors. So this is a pack of 20 sheet protectors from Walmart. These were $1.18 for a 20 pack. You can also get a big box of them from Sam's Club for like 15 bucks for like a hundred or something silly like that. These are, you can get super cheap. These will work. I have done this before. I have another book that I put together using a post-bound scrapbook. It works great. Love them. And that one is like a huge big old fatty book. So, that was to compile, you know, to compile the book itself. And then I also picked up some double-sided tape. It's not a tape runner, it's nothing fancy. Um, again, you know, this can be as fancy as you want or as low tech as you want. It could literally just be the paper, stick a sticker on it and put it into your kid's um, old binder from school. However you wanna do it. I continue to add to my collection. So I know this is going to keep getting bigger and bigger and I didn't want to have to keep redoing it. So I didn't want to have to keep reinventing the wheel. I wanted it to be kind of a one and done type of a deal. So that's why I went with these supplies. You can do it however you want to, whatever your needs are. If you have a collection of five things, a notebook will probably work just fine. Um, but again, I want to make sure I have all of the details. Oops, sorry, baby. I want to have all the details of the glass. So on my sheets, and I'll show you, I have maker, pattern, um, rough estimate of when it was made and um you know is it translucent glass is it opaque glass does it have the opalescent something that's small enough that it won't take up you know as far as like width and height and all that kind of stuff um i went with eight and a half by 11. it's just a size that i think will work well and um you know regardless of what you choose to use um make sure you document like I'm trying to do with, you know, who made it and that sort of thing. Um, with like, in case of, in like, with regards to his Steins or his collection, um, his collection doesn't just come from this country. Mine mostly comes from the U.S. He has Steins that were made in Germany. So, you know, that needs to be notated um, because at the end of the day, this is also for insurance purposes. So that's why I'm including a picture. If you don't want to include a picture, don't include a picture. I mean, that's entirely up to you and how it works with your insurance. Um, but I definitely wanna have this documented and you know that sort of thing because um, if we end up having to store any of this stuff for a little while, then I wanna make sure I have that record of it. And again, I want it to be able to be kept in the safe. I will be getting a separate um, scrapbook for Roger's collections and um, I think even with all of his uranium glass and his decanters and his Toby jugs and his steins and that sort of thing, he probably still doesn't have as much as I do milk glass wise. So I'm gonna start with the big ones first. 
um, just because I also, as I pull them out, um, I still owe y'all a few videos. So uh, Westmoreland and Anchor Hawking and some others because they're back there or they're just kind of scattered. So I'll pull all those together and I will, you know, do the inventory and kind of show you the different pieces as well. And we'll just kind of go from there. And I hope you guys are okay with that. Um, and then if you have any questions about like my inventory sheets or, you know, what type of things I, you know, why I picked what I did to put on mine, just let me know down below. Okay, so I just wanted to show you the, uh, the pages really quickly, so I apologize for the angle. We're actually in the office, but the lighting does get a little bit better here in a second. So at the top of the page, I have the date, I have the manufacturer, so like Westmoreland, uh, the pattern, which, you know, panel grape. I also have a spot for the object or what it is, so like biscuit jar. Um, there's also colors, so like in the case of that biscuit jar, it was white and opaque. I do have some milk glass steins that are um, opaque white, but they have the opalescent coating on them. Um, is it marked, yes or no? We know that like with cases of Fenton, they use stickers up until about the 1970s when they transitioned to an actual embossed stamp like Imperial Glass and Westmoreland were using on the bottom of their pieces. Um, the condition, the approximate age. Um, we know that some patterns were done for like forever like Fenton's Hobnail and other patterns were not done for quite so long like Westmoreland's Dolphin Candlesticks. Um, so like I said, uh, uh, let's see, I have on their purchase dates. So when I purchased it, um, how much I purchased it for, and current market value, because that's important for insurance purposes, as well as quantity. So like with the sandwich plates my grandfather got for me, I have four of those. That's how it made, my whole entire collection began. So I have that spot there also to document. And then there's a note section where I can put any relevant information, like where I purchased it, was it an estate sale, garage sale, at an antique shop, that sort of thing. That's what I picked. So um, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for being here and for watching. And I hope this does inspire y'all to take the time to inventory your own collections, regardless of how you choose to do so or what method you want to use. Um, if you have any questions, of course, please let me know down below, like I keep saying. And as always, remember to collect what you love, love what you collect. And until next time, I will see y'all soon. Bye!